Welcome to Excel magic trick number 1,426. Hey, if you want to download this Excel file so you can follow along, click on the link below the video. Hey, we're doing double videos on this one sheet. Last video, we did 1425 to extract a unique list in a single column from a two-way table. But in this video, we want to, from a lookup value right here, find a value in the middle of the two-way table and then extract the column header and the row header. Now, Alan at YouTube posted this question below this video here. And he had a bunch of IDs in the intersecting table. But he said they were all unique. So for speed, I just quickly created random numbers here. But there are no duplicates. Now, before we do our formula, I want to count how many columns there are and how many rows there are. So I'm going to use equals the columns function. And I'm going to highlight the number of column headers. Enter. So there's eight. Equals, and since we're counting rows, I'll highlight. I'll click in the first cell, Control, Shift, Down Arrow, Control, Backspace to jump back to the active cell, and Enter. Now I want to multiply these to calculate how many total items we have. Equal sign, up arrow times, up arrow, up arrow. So we have 320. Now I want to make sure these are unique. So I'm going to build a unique count formula. Now unique count formulas can be difficult, except if you have numbers. It's quite easy if you have numbers. I'm going to use the frequency function. Now normally we give frequency function a bunch of numbers and then the upper limits as bins, and it counts how many are in each group. But here, this is the trick. When you have numbers, you simply highlight all the numbers for the data. I'm going to click in the left cell, Control, Shift, right arrow, Control, Shift, down arrow, Control, backspace to jump back to the active cell. I'm going to click on Data Array because I want to copy that. Click at the end, comma, Control, V. When you're counting unique numbers, you just repeat all the numbers and all the bins. That way, when I close parentheses, if I F9 this, it'll give me three, hopefully, 320 ones. Also, notice 1, 0 at the end. That's because frequency function always adds one extra bin or category for counting any numbers greater than the last upper limit. That has no effect on us here, because we're doing a unique count. Now, notice these are all ones, because we have no duplicates. But if we did, there would be some counts that are 2, 3, and so on. So in order to make sure we're counting even when there's duplicates, counting only unique, we need to ask the question of all of these, Control z any of those values, are you greater than 0? Now if I hit F9, we get trues all the way. If we had any duplicates, that greater than 0 would give us a true no matter if it's a count of 2, 3, 4, and 5. Control-Z. Now I need to convert those trues and falses to 1s and zeros. I'm going to put this in parentheses because I need to force that comparative operator operation before I convert the trues and falses to ones and zeros. Now, we can use any math operation to convert trues and falses to ones and zeros. I'm going to use double negative. That is the fastest and most efficient way to convert trues and falses to ones and zeros. Now, if I hit the F9 key, we still have our same array of ones. And we need to add those, so Control-Z. I'm going to put it inside of the sum function. Now, normally with array operations, we would have to use the sum product function. But frequency function and other array functions like frequency, line est, mo dot mamult, transpose, those array functions, if you put them directly into an aggregate function like sum, min, max, they will calculate correctly. I'm going to close parentheses, and that's our formula. Enter. And there we go. I'm verifying that the count of rows and columns is equal to the unique items. Now, because I'm going to look up items here, I don't want to actually have to type these out. So in the last video, we created a unique list that looks as this is the source data. So if I change some unique item here, it will be reflected over here. But I want to use this list 
in a data validation dropdown. So in this cell, actually, I'm going to delete that and go up to data, data validation. I want to make sure that only items, not any value, but only items from a list are allowed here. And the source, click in the top cell, Control, Shift, Down Arrow, Control, Backspace to jump back to our original location, click OK. And now we have a drop down, and so I can select any particular item. So we're going to try and find column header product 8 and day 2. So the way I'm going to do this is we're going to ask the question equal, hey, this entire range right here, and I think I already have it Control V, that's the entire range. Are any of you equal to this? Now remember, there's 320 items in that range right there. We just asked 320 questions. Are any of you equal to that thing right there? Now, if I evaluate this, this is definitely an array operation, F9, to evaluate it. And somewhere in there, if I scroll over, there's the true right there. Now, notice because there's a unique list, we're always only going to get one true. So watch this, Control-Z. I have to put parentheses around this. But since I'm extracting column headers, I need to know which column it is. So I need to multiply it by the column function, not S, column. And I'm going to put the column headers in here. Close parentheses. Up here, we use columns with an S, so it counted. Columns with an S delivers 8. But column on lots of different columns is doing an array operation right there. That argument is expecting a single cell. We gave it a bunch, so it'll automatically do an array calculation. Actually, that's called a function argument array operation, which will force the column function if I hit the F9 key to spit out eight answers. Now, that's not what we want, because for the index function, you need one, two, three, four, and so on. Not the second column, but the first item in that range. Control-Z, no problem. We'll put parentheses around that and subtract column. And I'm going to get the very first item in the range. Right? Well, if that column right there, B6, well, there's a B6 there. So 2 minus 2 will be 0. The next cell will be 3 minus 2 will be 1. That won't work, so we have to add 1 back in. Close parentheses. Now, this little bit is a well-known formula element for delivering an array of relative positions. When I hit F9, it gives 1 to 8. So now when this whole range multiplies by this, only that one little true will pick out the correct column number. So Control-Z. Now if I click at the end and hit F9, there it is, a bunch of zeros and an 8. Because there are unique items here, we're only going to get one number. Now, this formula will require the special keystroke Control Shift Enter. If I try to put it in sum to add it, because I'm trying to get just the position of the item from those columns, it's not going to work because there's an array operation, and it requires Control Shift Enter. Now, I could use Control Shift Enter here, but forget that. There's a function that can handle array operations and will add from an array. Now, normally, some product takes multiple arrays, multiplies them, and then adds them. But if you use just one array, it will just add. So we're taking advantage of some product's ability, when I hit Enter, to just calculate the right answer, even if it's an array operation. Now, if I change this, so now I'm getting a 6. So now we have the position of the column header. So now F2, we just simply use that inside of index. Index the array, those are just the column headers. Comma. The row number, that's that whole big calculation. And that will work. Close parentheses and Enter. Whatever I change this to, that item right there, it says product 1. Now I'm going to steal this little bit. Only the first little bit here, 
Control C, Escape, come down here, equal sign, Control V. Now, we still need to multiply everything in here and ask the question, are you equal to that? It's still going to deliver that huge array, but we're interested in the row headers. So for our array of relative positions, we open parentheses and we use the row without an S function, Control, Shift, down arrow, Control, backspace. And I'm going to subtract from that row of A7, close parentheses, plus 1, close parentheses. Now, this whole thing will give me the numbers 1 to 40, F9. And those are all the possible rows for looking up the row header. Control Z, come to the end, close parentheses, enter. So that will be the sixth row, F2, inside of index. Now, for the array, those are the items to look up. I'm going to highlight the items we're looking up. Control, Shift, Down, Arrow, Control, Backspace, Comma. So those, those are all the potential row headers. Now, we used row number, and we do have a row here. By the way, up in this formula, we used row number even though we were looking up a column number. The reason why is anytime in index, the array is a one-way array either vertical or horizontal, the row number argument is programmed to simply pick out the relative position. Now I come to the end, close parentheses, and Enter. So that particular unique item was product one, day six. That's the column header and the row header. When I change this, there we get column header and row header. All right, that was a lot of fun. We counted columns, rows, counted the total items in a rectangular range, checked whether all the numbers constituted a complete, unique list. Then we use sum, product, column, and index to look up the column headers, and index, sum, product, and row to look up the row headers. All right, we'll see you next trick.